All right, so let's create a real-time Gaussian splitting experience for the web with the desktop solution. So we will not use any cloud solution. We want to be independent of that. So let's pick it up from what we did just before. So if you remember correctly, let me bring that up. We went through 3D reconstruction of two data set, one from an image based of Oslo Vigelund Museum and another one from a video of the backside of my garden um, to give a bit of a spring flare, if I may. <laughs> so with that now, what we want to do is actually push that to the next stage, which is creating this real-time web experience. And to do that, we will go through these nine steps by going through a setup phase first. So initially, it's indispensable in this case to install Cloud Compare. So to get your hands on Cloud Compare, you just go on cloudcompare.org. Let's check the website out and you go on to the download section. In here, you have the ability to download the distribution that fits your OS. So in my case, it will be Cloud Compare Unified and I will take the installed version. So I already have it here, okay? But if you do not, please install it. So once this is done, we move on to installing Gaussian splatting for Cloud Compare plugin. So to do that, it's a bit more complicated, but not too much. So we will have to take the code of Francesco Fugazzi, which is MIT, which is a license that you can use. And basically what it does, if you remember when we import a PLY file, we have the ability to choose some kind of Scala field and how to map them to visualize that. What this plugin does is it allows you to import it nicely. So having a PLY Gaussian splatting format and a PLY CC format and a way to go from one to the other in order to do the Gaussian splatting, edit in Cloud Compare, export uh, the PLY and push back to Gaussian splatting. So this is what we are going to do. Now to install it, it gives you a way to use git clone but if you're not familiar with python or with how to manage that let me give you a very quick way to do just that so the first thing is you go there and you download the zip file so let me put the zip file into data post shot 3d gs converter main zip and I save it. This is done. Now the second thing that we need to do is have Anaconda. So Anaconda is a way it's to handle virtual environment of Python distribution to handle things much more efficiently. So if I go onto anaconda.org in here, normally you have the ability to download Anaconda. And again, here you download it for your distribution. OK, so once this is done, you go through all the steps to install it and you have a GUI that you have the ability to use. But I will show you the common line interface to do just that. So the first thing that you do is actually go on to Anaconda prompt. And let me zoom in to see better and Conda and list will allow you to list all the environment that you have installed. So normally I should have one called GS Splat, which is actually the one I created to install this uh, little um, package. So if you don't have such an environment, it's okay. You just do conda create the name of the environment, GS Splat new. And I will give a Python version, let's say 3.9 to be sure, but you could leave it and you, you will have the latest version. So once I do that, it will create a new Conda environment in which we'll be able to install the package that is mentioned. OK, so at this stage, you can also install more packages to link at other courses or to use other function from uh, Python, which is super cool. So this is now installed as you can see i need to proceed so sometimes you need to say yes and once that all is done we have to do conda activate gsplat underscore new and now we are inside of our contain environment and this is where we will want to install this uh, little thing that we don't know so to install that 
let me get onto post shot and this is what we don't know did if you remember so right click and i will export to 3dgs converter main for now and if i go in there i have a setup.p so this is what will be used directly to set up uh, what we want. So the first thing is we will want to change our path to here. So to do that, first you press the letter of your path to go into the new path if you are on another drive. And then you do CD and you press the name of your path. And this is from where you will execute. And I get back onto my GitHub. And as you can see here, you have the ability to pip install and it will install if you press exactly the same command. So pip install may not work if you don't have pip installed. So first I will say conda install pip to make sure that pip, which is a package manager, which manages such package, so such libraries that you can use, needs to be installed prior to getting what we saw working. So now that it's, it's installed, I just do pip install point and it will grasp for me all the requirements that were listed, install all the libraries in order to have our little plugin working, okay? So, while this is installed, installing, I will show you how that works. So basically here, uh, the basic example are the, the ones below. So conversion from a 3D Gaussian splatting to Cloud Compare format with RGB addition. This is what we want. So we use the name of the little program as an input, we put the PLY as an output, the PLY. And we say that the format is cloud compare and we keep the RGB. So I copy that. I recommend to use like a notepad or, or something like this because we will need to adjust the path. This is something I did just before, but maybe I can do that here. So this is 3DS converter input as an input, let me check now. Post shot point cloud as an input, we want, for example, to have our house garden that we exported. And this is the one that we are seeing here, but which was not processed r nicely. So let me close cloud compare and shift click copy as a path. And now in here, I will input that you can leave that it should work and output i will do exact exactly the same thing except our garden underscore cloud compare and this is the line that i will now want to put in here this is perfectly okay we don't need to have all of this it's okay let's now just paste what i copied and i press enter and normally if all is well it should read the file, as you can see, 3D Gaussian Splitting Converter, detecting source format 3DGS and number of vertices, 1 million vertices conversion complete. So now if we check back here and update, we have the CC, it's a bit heavier. So now let me bring up Cloud Compare, which was nicely installed, and we will drag and drop this new file into Cloud Compare. So here I will take my file, drag and drop it into Cloud Compare. And as you can see, it's very different from what we had before because all the, the, the fields are pre-filled here with red, green, blue, NX, NY, NZ, and all the Scala are already pre-filled. So I just do apply and my point cloud will be nicely displayed. So in here, we have the ability to filter out exactly what we have. So for now, I just want to, to pick up what is inside, okay? So you remember that you have a rotation, so this is perfectly normal. So what we can just do is maybe try and correct a bit uh, the orientation to be a bit more flat. But this is really straight out from my bat. So the second thing that I will do is I will clean out all these remaining element really really quickly from one side like this for example i take all that is inside and i delete what is outside and then i move out from a perspective like this and i will align if it's rotated i think it's around the y-axis right yeah and i will try to align it 
with my frame of reference and I press OK. And this will allow me to cut much more nicely. So I take the scissor again and here I will select like this point. I take inside and I validate and normally we should have something much more clean. Let's see our little uh, splat looks much more clean. The last stage that you can do is to delete all the floating elements. So for that what I like to do is top view in this case and I would take my scissor, I still stay like this and uh, let's say that we will do it like this, segment inside and here I don't delete, I just have two pieces. Right now, I check here if we have any floating element. I will increase this, the size of the point, and the ID will be to remove the noise here. So, what you can do pretty quickly without being too aggressive is clean noise filter. And here, you can keep a radius that is automatically computed, but put a very high error in order not to be too aggressive, but remove isolated point. And doing that should remove most of my isolated point. And that's it. You see that we have a point cloud that is much cleaner, but maybe was it a bit too aggressive? Indeed, in this case, it looks like we destroyed a lot of points that could be useful to our Gaussian splat, even if it's cleaner. So let's take back this element and again, tools clean sore filter cancel tools clean noise filter and here I will take a radius of one centimeter and max error should be 15 and remove isolated point and here we go it looks a bit better so let's see still it's pretty heavy right but I will be happy with it. So if we check out the number of points, 672,000 against 696,000, so it's okay. I will be happy with it. And now what I do is I check out only the remaining element. And here looks like we have a lot of floating point as well. So we could do that also. So tools clean, noise filter, radius will be in this case one as well. And relative here will be like even higher 25 so that we remove really the isolated point and that's it that's the result so if i check again you see that we removed a lot of point it may be a bit aggressive in this case right yeah it may be a bit aggressive so let me redo it as always but this time um, tools clean noise filter We'll take a K and N of 10 points and the max error should be 25, remove isolated point. Let's check that out again. Okay, so here I'm, I'm happier. Um, we removed less point, but still it's a, maybe a bit low. So let me take that again, edit tools clean, noise filter point 10 and max error to 10 this time. Yeah, this is okay. And now what I do is actually I combine both this point cloud into one. I don't keep the indexes. And this is my new point cloud that we have. The last thing that I can do is remove these little outliers with a connected component. Okay, where I set up a grid which is low and min point per component, we will want it to be at, uh, let's say, a thousand. We don't put random colors because else it will erase the color, but that will help clean all the remaining points around. So now we have a pretty clean point cloud that we can save. And I will press save and in two format. The first format will be PLY, okay? And I will call that house garden CC cleaned, I save it, and binary is fine. And the second thing that I do is file, save this point cloud as an LAS file format with the name, let me 
check the name that I had, house garden. So LAS file format, house garden. This will allow me to showcase some cool stuff that we can do. Okay, so now let's move back to our little process. Installing Cloud Compare is done, installing Ocean Splatting CC is done, and as you can see in the edition, we did the three step here. So convert the Gaussian splatting to CCPLY. We edited the point cloud to clean it a bit. And now we need to export the point cloud to GSPLY. So moving back onto the GitHub, we'll go from cloud compare format back to 3D GS. So what I do is I copy this little line and I will go into again my notepad and change the input this time. The input is this but cleaned, underscore cleaned, and the output will be house garden gs cleaned dot ply format 3d gs. So I take this line, I copy it, I go back to my console, and in here I will just copy and paste it. Wait a bit, as you can see, we reduce the number of vertices and this is done, so it's pretty quick. And that's a wrap on the edition part of things. Uh, as you saw, I had the chance to change myself in between takes, but anyway, for the experience part of thing that you can see just here, from setting up a local server to uh, converting the PLY to Splatify and creating real-time web experience, there's a thing that you will find in the 3D Reconstructor course at the 3D Geodata Academy. So if you want to push a tad more what we just saw here and create an actual web experience, I will encourage yourself to spot right on and dive onto the course. So I hope you enjoy this specific take and see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.